Okay. Thank you, Lord. We're back Sunday. we back into our regular church service. For the last four weeks or so, we have been doing a different service. We've been servicing and renovating the church. And thank God for that. We've been working on the exterior of the church, to be more precise. Uh, the campaign, uh, the people had a mind to work with the First Lady had titled and had been instrumental in. The people had a mind to work based, built, based off of Nehemiah whenever they built the wall back that was destroyed. So thank God that we're back here today in his house and in his presence. Amen. And we have a rather long title for this sermon. I'm not saying that the sermon is going to be long, but the title is relatively long. And I have something to tell you about this title. Um, those of you who don't know, especially those who are watching on the way of YouTube and what other device, what other medium you may be watching on, that I'm also a therapist and I see patients. And as a result of me seeing a patient, some, a lot of what I do in different backgrounds that I had been in, my... Uh, references come from the different areas of my life. So if I'm up here preaching to you, you might hear some things, you might hear some references with sports, because I'm a former college football player. You might hear some references to fitness, since I'm a personal trainer. And on the job, they hear these references too, but they also hear the reference that me being a pastor and a bishop. They hear references from that, different quotes out of the Bible, different biblical points of view. And so I had this one lady uh, in one of my therapy sessions, and she was saying that she was agnostic, I believe that's the name of it. She was agnostic, and she had a hard time putting her mind around how God could allow some of the things that had happened in her life. And I said... <laughs> So that's what she was saying she had trouble with. And I showed her this, and it literally brought tears to her eyes. I, I, this, this, the title that I'm ready to share with you. The title of the sermon I shared with her, and get this. I was speaking with her on the 12th of October. And I showed her the title of this sermon, which was put up on October the 10th. And it brought tears to her eyes because it was exactly what she was talking about and dealing with. And I said, how can you not believe that this is not, it's not a God? I had no idea we were going to be talking about this. But God knew. God knew. Right? And so the, the, the topic, the title of the message is, Do Not Lose Faith in God Based on What He Did or Did Not Do for Someone Else. Does everybody understand me on this? Amen. I want everybody to understand me. Amen. You cannot lose faith in God based on what he did or did not do for someone else. You know what? You're not in that relationship. You are not in that relationship. You don't know what that relationship consists of. They could be the holiest person that you think, and you still don't know what was going on between their relationship between them and God. You don't know. Amen. So you cannot lose your faith over what he did for someone else or didn't do for someone else and say, oh, well, if you're with God, why would he allow that to happen? Because you don't know. You don't know the ins and outs, the ups and downs, the in-betweens. You don't know that. So don't you lose faith over it. And, and, and that's something that we really, truly have to understand. Now, what we can do from other people is we can gain faith, but don't lose faith. We can gain it. They were retained by the words of their testimony or by the blood of the Lamb. So we can gain faith. Faith come by hearing and that by the word of God. So we can gain faith, but don't lose faith based on what God did or did not do for someone else. And I was um, 
And just, just think about it. Some people, you know, you just don't know what someone says to God. There's some people might, one of the situations that was uh, given in this, uh, with this lady that I was telling you about is her mother got taken really early when she was young. She was like about four years old. And her mother got taken, you know, to where her mother died. Right? And her dad, I think, died kind of young. Not young, young, but kind of young too. According to people living like 80 to 90 years old and stuff like that. And she had a hard time with that. You know, I mean, that was a hard thing that she had to deal with. And I had said this. Because you never know. She, she sounded like her mom went to church all the time. Mom would take her to church. And, you know, it's not like they grew up in a strict church. You, could only, you couldn't have your toes out, you had this, that, and the other. It sounded like it was a holiness church, actually, to be true for the matter. But what happened was, she was like, how could God take someone like that? And I said, you never know what her prayer could have been. Her prayer could have been this, God, no matter what, bless me to make heaven. Bless heaven to be my home. And so in order for her to make heaven, she may have to leave this earth early. You understand? Because we know the word of God said, except God shortened the days, even the very elect wouldn't be saved. So maybe that might have been what she needed to have been able to make it. We don't know what, what people, the relationship people have with God. And I want you to really understand what I'm telling you. You don't know the relationship. You don't know what was said between that person and God. So we cannot say, oh, well, God didn't heal this person. Well, maybe that person, you don't know what was going on with that person. Why would God allow this person to have this particular illness? You don't know what it might, why God? It might have took that illness, that, 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 the, the relationship, that illness and how long that illness was lasting and how long that illness tarried for that person to get themselves right so they don't go to hell. You understand? So why would God allow this person to have cancer whenever they've been serving him off? Because they didn't have everything right. If he would have took them quick in a car accident, they might have been in hell. Please. You understand? Amen. Talk back to me if you understand what I'm telling you. Amen. You don't know what may happen today in a bit of a car accident. They might have made it. They might have been, hell might have been their home. So he might have had to give them an illness, something to think about. Think about your leaving this earth. And think about where they might go if they don't get things right. Preach, Bishop. To where they, don't, where they might go if they don't get things right. To where now they have an opportunity to get it right. But if they didn't have that illness, they might have got comfortable in that sin or what they didn't get right with God. They might have got comfortable in it and just laid in it and got you know, to a right old age and then went on and been, and been lost. But now since they're, you know, he touches their body and they start thinking about, well, I'm going to die. Do I have everything right? This may give them that opportunity. So we just don't know the hand of God. It says, God's ways are high above our ways. His thoughts are above our thoughts. We don't understand it all. But don't lose faith over what he does or doesn't do for someone else. Don't lose faith. Don't do it. So what we're going to do is, we're going to examine portions of scripture that's going to try to bear this out. And it's two kings we're going to talk about in this scripture. And they both did similar things. And the similar things they did was sin against God, okay? They both did similar things, but they had different outcomes. Different outcomes. We're going to talk about King Saul and King David. While one, they both sinned, but one seemed like he had a much more heavy judgment than the other. But when you look at it, you'll say, well, why would God do that for him and not do that for the other? Why would God show mercy on him and not show mercy on the other? On the outside eye, that's what you could look at. You could say, they both sin. Why would God allow one to, to live and the other to die? They both sin. That's us looking on the outward. That's us looking on the outward. And so we have to really truly understand. We don't understand the mind of God. 
Because he's too deep for us. So let's go ahead and turn to 1 Samuel chapter 15, verse 28. And it reads, And Samuel said unto him, The Lord hath rent the kingdom of Israel from thee this day, and hath given it to a neighbor of thine that is better than thou. Now I'm going to give you an intro into this. I'm going to, I'm going to actually go back and, give you, and tell you a little bit about it. God had gave Saul some instructions. He was to go to utterly destroy the Amalekites, not to save anything. Everything there was to be destroyed. Anything that was alive, man, women, boy, girl, king, any, they were all supposed to be destroyed. Animals. Yes, that's right. Rich said animals. That's right. Animals. Everything was supposed to be destroyed. Everything was supposed to be destroyed. But Saul took the best stuff back with him. Took the king back with him. And that wasn't what supposed that wasn't supposed to have been done. He was supposed to utterly destroy the Amalekites. So God was displeased with that. He was displeased. Now I want us to jump. I know the outline says uh, it tells you to go to another uh, we're gonna I'm going out of outline. I'm gonna go to 2 Samuel. Right, because I'm going to compare the two different kings in the two different outcomes. Second Samuel chapter 12, verses 7 and 13. Not 7 through 13, 7 and 13, okay? All right. And Nathan said to David, Thou, thou art the man. Thou art the man. Now I've got to give you a little intro into this. Well, let's actually turn to it. Let's go to uh, let's go to Second Samuel and, and 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 read a little bit about what uh, what had happened here. So Nathan came to Samuel and said this, and the Lord sent Nathan unto uh, unto David, and he came unto him. This is verse verse one, Second Samuel chapter twelve, and he came unto him and said unto him, There were two men in one city. The one rich and the other poor. The rich man had exceeding many flock and herd. The poor man had nothing save one little ewe lamb, which he had bought and nourished up. And it grew up together with him and with his children. It did eat of his own meat and drank of his own cup and laid his bosom and laid in his bosom and was unto him a daughter. And there came a traveler unto the rich man, and he spared to take of his own flock and of his own herd to dress for the wayfaring man that was come unto him, but took the poor man's lamb and dressed it for the man that was come to him. And David and David's anger was greatly kindled against the man and said to Nathan, And the Lord liveth, that the man that done this thing shall surely die. And he shall restore the lamb fourfold because he did this thing and because he had no pity. And Nathan said to David, Thou art the man. Thus said the Lord God of Israel, I anointed thee king over Israel and delivered thee out of the hand of Saul. Now we're going to go down to verse 13. And David said unto Nathan, I have sinned against the Lord. And Nathan said unto David, now listen to this, the Lord, have, have, the Lord also hath put away thy sin. Thou shalt not die. The Lord put away his sin. He still had to pay for it. There were certain things that the Lord said he was going to go through. Okay? But this, remember that right there. Now let's go back and let's go to 1 Samuel chapter 15 and verse 11. I mean verse 17, excuse me. 1 Samuel 15 and 17. See, God knows what's going on with us. They both sin. 
They both sinned. David's sin was he, he put Uriah, Bathsheba's husband, in the hot battle because he was sleeping with her and she was found with child. So he was he killed Uriah. He had Uriah put into the hot battle to be killed. So that's what all that was about, right there. The little ewe lamb. David had all these women, all these wives and concubines. He's gonna go take this man's wife right here. So that's what that was all about. Now. Saul had, we talk, which we already talked about, Saul had sinned because he didn't utterly destroy the Amalekites. So while with, in Saul's end was, the kingdom was ripped from him. And he also got killed. He also died. Right? He didn't die, he didn't die in his sleep and in his bed. He died through battle. He got, a, he, he got killed. So why would his end be that way and David's end be another way? Some people might say, you know, but see, that's what we try to do. We try to look at situations and say, you know, we try to justify. Well, why would God do this? Why would God do that? Right? We can't justify. We can't look at what God did for some or didn't do from someone else and allow that to weaken our faith. Because God knows what's going on. He knows that person better than we know that person. So why didn't David and Saul get the same thing? Because God knew Saul and David better than we knew them. He made them. He created them. But let's read on. And Samuel said, see this is what I believe why this has happened to Saul. And Samuel said, when thou was little in thy own sight, did you catch the word? When thou was little in thy own sight. Preach. When he was little, He's not little now. Right? How do we know he's not little now? He's trying to kill David. Got all upset whenever they said David killed, Saul killed his thousands. David killed his tens of thousands. Mm -hmm. Right? You know, and, he said, and Samuel said, when thou was little in thy own sight, was thou not made the head of the, head of the tribes of Israel? So when you stay low, it's just like it's where, you know, God exalts you. Right, God to exalt you. So weren't you made the head of the tribes of Israel? And the Lord anointed thee king over Israel. But see, his heart must have changed along the way. Because based off of this scripture right here, his heart changed along the way. But and so God must have recognized something had happened, something had changed in Saul. The Saul wasn't that same young, humble person that he was. He wasn't that same humble young person. He changed into something completely different. And as a result of that, that's probably why he got the judgment that he got. And he must realize that David, 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 no, yeah, David sinned, David messed up, but he knew the heart of David wasn't that way because David didn't give an excuse whenever it came. Saul gave an excuse and said, they made me do it. I, I was fearful of the men in that. But David didn't give an excuse. David said, I sinned. David didn't give an excuse. Or try to say, yeah, I did what the Lord told me to do. Saul came and said, I did what the Lord told me. And that's when the Samuel said, well, why do I hear that sheets, you know, ringing in my ears or something to that nature? Right? So it came to the point to where... They had a different, a different. Saul wanted to come up with excuses. Saul wouldn't fess up to what he did. Saul was heady and high-minded, and you know, he, and he's getting upset over little things about songs that they were singing. But David said, "I sin. I sin." Didn't come up with an excuse. Didn't say, "Oh my, you know what? You know." You know I'm only a man. I seen her bathing. What could I do? He didn't come up with an excuse. See, God knows what's inside of a man. God knows that. And so what we have to do is we have to not look at what he didn't do or did do to discourage us from walking with God, but realize that God had a reason in what he did do, and he's a just God, and he's a faithful God, and he's a long-suffering God, and whatever he did has to be right. That's what we have to realize. 
Let's look at let's look at 1 Samuel chapter 16 and 7. And now, this is what I think we do sometimes. We judge things on the superficial level. And we do that even with what God did for somebody or what he didn't do for someone. We judge it on the superficial level. We are not deep enough. We haven't gotten deep enough. And we may never ever get deep enough because we don't have the mind of God. But we do this sometimes. But the Lord, but the Lord said unto Samuel, Look not on his countenance. Talk about David. Whenever they were looking to anoint another king instead of Saul. But the Lord said unto Samuel, Look not on his countenance or on the height of his stature, because I have refused him. For the Lord seeth not as man seeth. For man looketh on the outward appearance, but God, but the Lord looketh on the heart. See, David had brothers who looked like they should have been the one. They were bigger than he was, right? They had more stature than he was. He was probably the right, he was the right of the group. He was the youngest of the group. But God looked at him differently. And so we can't look at things the way we th and think that we know. Because by choice, you would probably say, oh, no, that little, little boy ain't going to be the king. That one over there should be the king. You don't have the eye of God. You don't have the mind of God. And you just don't know what he does. You don't know what he does. Right? But I'll tell you one thing. If, if, if you're serving, if you don't think that some things, you kind of wonder why he did certain things a certain way. If you serve him, he does read on. He says, he said, now we look through a glass darkly. Soon we shall see face to face. I shall know even as I am known. Right? So later on, these things that we don't understand, well, Lord, why did I have to go through this? Why did I have to go through that? Why did this happen to my brother? Why did this happen to my sister? Why did this happen to my uncle? Why did this happen to my aunt? Why, why, why? Later on, if you serve him the way that you should, and you're up in his kingdom, right, you're looking through a glass darkly right now, and that's letting us know. We're not gonna, we can't make good judgments looking through a glass darkly and trying to even to ponder what he does. But later on, we shall see face to face. <laughs> it won't know very clearly at that point in time. So, we have to really, we have to trust in God. He is almighty. He knows better than we know. He knows better than we know. And we just got to ask them, Lord, I'm hurting right now. Right? You know I'm hurting. Help me through this hurt, through this pain. But I'm not going to charge you foolishly. I'm not going to say, I, I'm not going to walk with you anymore. I'm not going to talk with you anymore. I'm not going to serve you anymore. I'm angry at you. I heard that a lot this, uh, this week, last week too. Right? And, you know, and this point about it is, is no, we're not going to charge God foolishly. None of us should. We just got to say, Lord, I don't understand it, but you didn't tell me it was necessary for me to understand. You told me it's just necessary for me to do. Right? I don't understand it right now. I don't know what's going on right now, but I'm trusting in you because you're almighty God. And help me to go, help me to go through this, to get over this, but you're almighty God. You're God. You were God before I was even, before I was on this world, you're God. You'll be God after I leave this world, you'll be God. As the first day son, he will never cease to be God. Never cease to be God. Amen. He's God. And I, I want you, and I think this is so important, and I want you all to share these words, because people, this is what stands in people's way. About what he did do or didn't do for someone. They stand in his way like they had the mind of God. And knowing why he did what he did. Or why he didn't do what he did. What, he, what they thought he should have done. We can't do that. He's God. He's God. We're going to actually turn to the New Testament now. We're going to look in the Acts. 2 and 40. And this is why we can't do that. We can't do that. We have to develop a relationship with God for ourselves. 
You can't go off of what he did do or didn't do for some. You got to develop a relationship with God for yourself. And it reads, and with many other words did he testify and exhort, saying, save yourself from this untoward generation. Save yourself. So don't let someone else discourage you from not being saved based on what happened in their life. It says save yourself from this untoward generation. Oh, well, he didn't, he didn't heal so-and-so. Save yourself. Right? What went on with them is between them and God. But you save yourself from this untoward generation. You do what you need to do. You sit here whining and crying about this person. They'll be up in heaven while you're crying and still whining and crying when you're in hell. You understand? You need to do what you need to do. Mind your own business, matter of fact. They're, they're mine before they were yours. Mind your own business. I'll do what I want to do. He's God. Let's turn to Philippians chapter 2, verse 12. Wherefore, my beloved, as ye have always obeyed, not as, not as in my presence only, but now much more in my absence. Work out your own salvation with fear and trembling. See, it's a personal walk. Work out your own salvation. Save yourself from this untoward generation. Right? You better make sure you're right. Work on you. Work on you. Well, why did he do so and so? Work on you. Why did, he, why did he do this? Work on you. He know what he's doing. But what are you doing? Work on you. And, 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 and that's the problem that people have. They're, they're, they're too busy trying to judge God based off of what he did or did not do for someone. Or for them, for that matter. But you're supposed to trust God. You're supposed to trust Him. And know that He's God. And just like a parent, just like a regular parent, I always make mention of God and I relate it to natural parents because He's the ultimate Father. Right? And just like a parent, just because they don't give you that thing that you wanted just right, then don't mean that they're not, they don't love you. Don't mean that, don't mean that they don't exist. Does it? Oh, mom, give me the so-and-so, so-and-so, so-and-so. And mom's like looking at her bank account saying, I can't get the so-and-so, so-and-so, so-and-so right now. Right? So we're going to have to maybe get that another time. And you don't go and say, oh, they're not, that's not my mom. She didn't get me the so-and-so. You know that's your mom. You just didn't get the so-and-so. Right? You better wait. Maybe later on. Maybe next month you might get the so-and-so. You might get, let's name the so-and-so. You might get the new bike next month. You didn't get it this month. Because there was other things that was going on that you didn't see. That you didn't have knowledge of. Amen. Amen. Right? So, I, 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 I link it the same way. So, we got to realize that just because... It didn't happen. Don't mean that he's not God. Right? You don't know what's going on. And just because he don't do it don't mean that you should not serve him. Like I said, not, natural parents don't always give their children everything that they want. And sometimes we may have the means to give them what they ask for. We just know it's not good for them. No, I'm not giving you that. You're not ready for that. You're not mature enough now for that. That's going to hurt you. So we got we, we, we got to think of God in this way. We got to think of God in this way. So if you have you know if you know someone who's 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 hurting over something that God did or didn't do, did. share these words with them. Share these words with them. Let them realize that they don't have the mind of God. This is God's creation. And he'll do what he'll do whatever he will. 
who do whatever you as a matter of fact, the word of God said he worketh all things after the counsel of his own will. So we need to remember, remember that and serve him. And hopefully, thank God, we're, we're, we'll be on more of the receiving end of blessings and not on hardship. Now we're going to do, we're going to have the altar call. So 